Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be about this company here called Exostrucks. Now this company makes last mile delivery trucks um, and they actually have these trucks out on the road. They've already had sales. Um, so there's customers that are already using their trucks right now. Um, this video is actually a, um, a request from Cool Hand Steve here on my latest video on Volta. Um, so thanks for the recommendation and uh, let's get into the video. So Exos basically has three main products that they've got. They've got this step van here that covers the class 5 and 6 segments. They've got the MDXT that covers class 6 and 7. And then they've got the HDXT which they plan to begin production I believe in 2023 and this covers class 8. Now in addition to their trucks, Exos also offers a number of other products. One of those is the Exos Hub here. And the way this basically works is it's basically a gigantic battery in a trailer. It's got a 400 kilowatt hour capacity and it can charge up to five trucks at once at a 40 kilowatt speed. Basically the way this giant battery recharges is customers can plug this into a 480 volt three phase power system. And this product allows customers to be able to charge their trucks before they're able to install chargers at their site. So basically if they have any kind of delays or any tr problems installing their chargers, this product allows them to be able to charge their trucks immediately and um, it's kind of a shorter term solution for these customers but this gets the job done for them. Now Exos also develops a lot of their own software in-house and their main software offering here is called the Exosphere. Um, this is basically just a fleet management software. It's built for fleets and as you can see um, this software basically allows fleet operators to view all of their vehicles. They can see the total range that the vehicle has, percentage of the charge that it's at, current location, the odometer, energy efficiency, the number, um, all of that very nice user interface for fleet managers to use. Now one more thing that Exos has done is they've developed their own battery system called the Lira and basically they purchase the cells from a supplier but they do all of the rest of the work. They, com they make the pack and they do all of the electrical work and all of that. Now taking a look over at Exos's financials we see um, it's kind of interesting so they went and SPAC'd last year. They went public through a SPAC and um, a lot of the cash that they ended up getting, um, they actually went and put into a lot of debt securities. Um, they put a, a lot of it into um, long-term debt securities and as well as uh, short-term debt securities. Um, those have gone down a lot since uh, last year when they SPAC'd. So those numbers are a lot lower now. As you can see here, um, December 31st, 2021. Um, long-term debt securities was at $54 million. And then also uh, short-term was at 94 million dollars. So both of these numbers, you know, right now it's down at 64 million and um, long term is down at 13 million. So they've decreased and they've been going through um, that funding that they've gotten, um, taking a look over at their um, income statement. Uh, revenues of 9.7 million dollars. The company is growing the revenue, that, so that's one good thing. Um, not all companies right now are growing their revenues. Um, so they are growing their revenues. Um, taking a look over at um, last quarter, first quarter this year, um, their revenues were at a little bit over 7 million and here in quarter two um, at 9.7 million. So uh, quarter over quarter their revenues are up. Um, cost of goods sold though are also increasing and their margins are actually getting worse. So basically um, gross margin right there in quarter one was better than where it is more recently in quarter two. So it'll be interesting to see where a lot of these things end up coming out at the end of uh, quarter three this year in the report. Um, take a look at their operating expenses. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say they're too out of control. Um, a lot of companies I know, um, a lot of the charging companies I've, se I've seen, they've gone and increased their operating expenses like a whole ton after getting um, their funding from the SPAC. Looking back at Exos's quarter three results, um, this was right after they SPAC'd. Um, they had operating expenses of only like 14.2 million here. So they haven't really gone and increased that a crazy amount since then. Um, obviously it is up, but um, not as up as, you know, not, not necessarily to a very worrying extent, in my opinion, quite yet. Um, so there they are right now as of quarter two, 22.7 million dollars. 
Now, you will notice that Exos has gone ahead and increased their research and development expense quite a lot since last year. And that's driven by three main things. The first of those is basically their software, which is primarily driven by that Exosphere product for fleet management. And then they've also got the battery system that they've been developing. And then the third contributing factor here is Exos's modular chassis system that they've been developing. And they'll allow multiple different specifications all using the same platform. So after all of these expenses, Exos ended up having a $27.8 million operating loss. And, you know, they're able to sustain this for now. Obviously, they have a very low cash position right now. Um, but they do have, you know, they've, they've got a lot of uh, current assets tied up in their uh, current debt securities as well as their inventories. Um, those inventories, they have been increasing each quarter. Um, so it's very interesting to see that. I think that could be the result of some supply chain issues. Um, obviously, everybody's been dealing with that. Um, so, you know, $40 million in inventories here in quarter one, and then $60 million over in quarter two. Taking a look over at Exos's stock, we see that, uh, like most stocks this year, they've been completely destroyed. Right now, they're trading at $1.13 per share at a $187 million market cap. Uh, taking a look over at some of the ratios here, we see that they've got a 9.3 price to sales and a 1.28 price to book. Um, now, I don't think Exos's valuation is particularly outrageous necessarily. I think that it is um, kind of quite fairly valued for the market we're in right now. Um, now, I, I do kind of have some concerns with their balance sheet here, um, particularly um, their inventories line. Um, obviously, this line has been increasing. And um, a another thing is just their um, gross margin keeps getting worse. Um, obviously, at the beginning, of, um, towards the beginning of this year, they were expecting uh, their margins to end up improving this year. Um, but uh, looks like they haven't been. They've only been getting worse. So, you know, um, probably some supply chain issues there. Um, so those are kind of some of my main concerns off the bat with this company. So that's pretty much why I'm not investing in Exos. I, I think that there's definitely a lot of companies out there that are far more risky than Exos, but in, in the market we're in, I think that there's just so many more companies that are much better investments right now, um, companies that are much more established and much safer, and I'd say invest in those um, over this company. So that's pretty much my thoughts on Exos. Um, hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure to check out some of my videos. I've got a lot of videos on charging stocks, so make sure to check out some of those, and I'll see you guys in the next video.